Yuma Daf Yudalad, two emails. The first one comes from Ralph Groskoff. He says, Watching you share at the Dafyemi Center, I cannot refrain from marveling at the child who sits on your left hand side center table with his finger on the place and a pen in his hand. I have my full admiration for a child who could have been having fun playing games, etc. Giving away his time before school to sit in a shear, I agree. And be so attentive. Call a kavot to him. His father must be having so much nachas, refold, gross cough. 100%. If you come to the Bismarck, you'd see there are at least six kids every single day. They give everyone so much nachas. It's unbelievable. Second email comes from Jonathan Stern and he says, I appreciate the profound impact you have in making Daf Yomi truly accessible to all of us. As well as learning the Daf, I'm learning with my son Yossi in America, Mesech Shabbos, which we both enjoy so much. Yours sincerely, Jonathan Stern. Excellent. Thank you, Jonathan. So Yuma Daf Yudala, the Gemara tells us that Rava says that according to Rabbi Yehuda, they made a Gzeira that the Kain Gadol, who just lost a loved one, he's in the state of Aninos, he's an Aynan, he should not perform any Avod in the Beis HaMikdash because we're concerned he might come to eat from the Karbanais. He didn't make the Gzeira Yom Kippur that he might be in Aninos and he's going to come to eat because no one eats Yom Kippur and we're not concerned he might be different than everybody else. Now, if his wife dies, is he an Aynan? He's not really an Aynan because the Gemara said yesterday that he gives his wife a get on condition that she's Magurish Lema Freya, she's, re- she's really divorced and he's not an Aninus. But the answer is, nevertheless, physically, he's very sad that his wife died, even though she's not technically his wife. And you, a kind God will need Simcha and Gedula. Our mission tells us that all seven days that he's sequestered, he has to practice Zerik Saddam, Akhtar Saktoires, cleaning out the Neirois, he brings up the, the Rosh and the Regal of the Karban. All other days of the year, Kohen Gadol could walk into Beis HaMikdash, decide any Karban he wants, he can be Makriv, and he can eat from anything. It says in the Pasuk, Vihiza Hatar al By Par Aduma, a person who's Tar, sprinkles the person that's Tomei. Comes Rebbe Kiv and says a tremendous Chiddush. But if you do the opposite, if somebody's Tar sprinkles on somebody that's already Tar, that person that's Tar becomes Tomei. According to Rabbanu, no, the Pshat in the Pasuk is that if you spray on something that's Mikabal Tumah, then you could spray it again. But let's say if you spray an animal, an animal is not Mikabal Tumah. So by you spraying, you just perform the Malacha with this Mechatas, so you're not allowed to spray it again. And we always consider what was sprayed at the end. So even if you intended to spray a human being, but you sprayed an animal, you cannot use it again. If you intended to spray an animal, but it ended up spraying a human being, you could use it again. But according to Rebbe Kiva, that if you spray a person who's tar, you become tummy. That's what Shleim HaMelech meant when he said, This is one part of the Torah I'll never understand. It's part of Duma. How is it possible a person that's tar gets sprayed by this mechatas that makes everybody who's tummy tar, he becomes tummy. But Rabbi said, say, yeah, Shleim HaMelech spoke about part of Duma. But what he meant to say is that if you lift up the water, you become Tomei and you have to wash your clothing. And the, although the Torah used the lotion of Mazah spraying, but the Torah meant he lifted it up to teach us that you need a shear of spraying. There's a machlaikas. If the person getting sprayed, that needs a shear as well. But a person that just touches Mechatas, doesn't lift it, does not need to wash his clothing. He becomes Tomei but doesn't have to wash his clothing. According to Rav Chizda, Rebbe Kiva cannot be going in our Mishnah. Why? Because you spray the Kohen Gadol every single day of the seven days. So then he can't perform any of the Avaidas that we talk about. But Abai says it's not a problem. Let him perform all the Avaidah. And at night you do the Hazza, after he's done with the Avaidah. And at, before night. And then he goes to the Mikvah before night. And then he has nighttime, a hair of Shemesh, and he becomes tar for the next day. And he can start all over again, do the Avaidah, and then get sprayed again. In our mission, you see that Ketiris comes before cleaning out the candles. Why? Because our Mishnah, Mesech Yuma, goes like Rabbi Shimon Isha Mitzvah. But in Mesech Tamid, it says that the Menorah goes first and then the Ketiris. That cannot be going according to Rabbi Shimon Isha Mitzvah. Why? Because it says in Mesech Tamid that the Kayin, when he goes up to Mizbeach, he first turns to the right. Gets up to the right, and then he makes it looks like a left turn, but it's really considered a right turn because he's hugging the Mizbeach. And when he gets to the northeastern corner, he sprays the corner and he hits both walls, the north and the east. 
Then he continues walking to his right and he hits the southwestern corner. And he sprays the corner once and he hits both walls. So Shtayim Shein Marba. But according to Rabbi Shimon, that Mishnah can't be going according to him. Because he holds that when he gets to the southwestern corner, he doesn't spray with the Kli. He takes his finger according to Rabbi Eliakim and he just smears the two walls nicely. There's actually three things, three walls that he's hitting. So it can't be going according to him. There's an actual contradiction in our, in our Mishnah, because our Mishnah is different. The, the next Mishnah says, later on it says that in the second lottery, the lottery is for who's going to do Shechita, Zrika, Dishim, Zbech, Pnimi, the Menoira, and then who's going to bring up the Ivarim, and then only afterwards it says in the third lottery, who does the Ketaris. The brand new people have never done Ketaris because it's Gula. So you see that Ketaris comes after the Menoira. Our Mishnah says Ketaris comes before Menoira. It says Abayah, this is Allah that when you're cleaning out the menorah, you have to make a hefsik, you have to stop between the fifth candle and the sixth and the seventh, the last two. And therefore, how do you stop? By doing ketaris, as you see in the picture. So you do five, stop doing ketaris, and then you do two. So that's what our mission is talking about before the last two. So ketaris comes before the last two. But later on, it's talking about that you did ketaris, the, the, the neiris, the five neiris, and then you did ketaris. The Pasuk says about Boike Betivis HaNeiris Yachterena that the Ketar should already be giving off its smell and fragrance as you're doing the Menorah. But Rabbi Shal says the opposite. It seems from the Pasuk that first you do all the Neiros and only afterwards you do the Ketaris. So what kind of Hefzik do you have between the five and the two? By doing the carbon Tamid, have a wonderful day.